Hey there fellow YouTubers, this is Anthony from Guitar Mods, and this week's Tone Week video we're going to talk about this, the Jet City Afterburner Dual Stage Overdrive. Let's get started. <music> Alright, so like I said, we're going to talk about the Jet City Afterburner Dual Stage Overdrive. This is an awesome sounding overdrive, and I'm going to be so bold as to say, maybe even an overdrive that ends your search for the next overdrive. I know that most likely if you're watching this, uh, you're probably watching this not looking for your first overdrive, but your second or third or fourth, or if you're like me, you know, number whatever in your closet full of them. This is an awesome sounding overdrive. I've had this about seven months and I've waited this long to do a review to make sure I liked it and I just can't get rid of it. It just sounds that good in a live mix. If this is for your first overdrive pedal, totally go for it. Uh, the price is about 80 bucks, which is awesome. The pedal's built like a tank and it's a dual stage overdrive, which means basically it's two overdrive pedals in one and value for money, that's pretty darn good. Now well, let's dig into it. You've got four knobs, you've got a volume, tone, overdrive and boost, a on off true bypass switch, this is true bypass, and a boost function uh, which is um, not separate from the pedal being on or off. So if the pedal is off, the boost will not function. To dual stage overdrive, you can think of it like a two channel amplifier. Uh, your overdrive channel is kind of like one and the boost is kind of like channel two. Now the drive on both of them is, is exactly the same. And unfortunately, I find that if you turn the overdrive all the way up and you turn the boost up, um, the boost really becomes not important. It really doesn't make a difference. Where this pedal really shines is if you run the overdrive down, kind of like a channel one, and then you crank the boost up, uh, giving you that second channel uh, or dual stage um, overdrive, which is really great. Because then you can set up some nice light overdrive work for some rhythm stuff, and then crank the boost up for, say, some heavier choruses and some lead work. This is made out of steel and aluminum. The pedal is super, super solid. Uh, I think the only aluminum pieces are probably the battery door uh, and the screws on it. This thing just demands to be stomped on. Uh, the knobs turn really nice. The switches are super clicky. Uh, they feel really sturdy. On the back side, we have a nice thumb screw there for the battery door, so it's easy to get in and replace batteries. And it comes with four of these rubber feet uh, to help the pedal for move around. Obviously I've removed them uh, to put Velcro on here. Alright, so let's take a listen to how this pedal sounds. We'll be playing through my Epiphone Les Paul Classic. We're just going to use the bridge pickup, which is a Seymour Duncan SH4. Uh, that'll run straight into the afterburner, and then that'll run back to my Igniter Tweaker here. I've got the amp set pretty flat. The knobs aren't flat, but the EQ is set pretty flat. I don't want to uh, boost mids or bass or treble or anything. I want you to hear pretty flat response. Uh, that all comes out of my uh, cabinet back here, which is loaded with a Governor uh, speaker made by Eminence, and that's mic'd up with an Electro Voice PL84. The Governor is very uh, similar to a Vintage 30. Um, actually, in my experience with playing Vintage 30s, it's just a better Vintage 30. So what you're going to hear in your ears if you're listening to headphones or, or a good set of speakers should be pretty well what I'm hearing here. <laughs> Cool, so that's our clean signal. Let's take a peek at the pedal. We're just gonna go with the knobs all at 12 o'clock. Um, and I find the volume, unity volume is right at 12 o'clock on this pedal, which is pretty awesome. Uh, but let's just take a listen. <laughs> Now I want you to notice that as the pedal's on and off, there's always a level of clean signal of your guitar running parallel with the effect. So you always hear some of your clean signal, uh, which really helps your guitar to cut through. Awesome. Let's move on to the boost side. With all the knobs set at 12 o'clock, there really isn't any difference with boost. Where you're going to notice the difference is if you turn the boost up, which is quite a bit on here. For this purpose, I'm actually going to turn the overdrive down uh, so we can hear the full range of the boost on this pedal. So with the boost down, there's no difference. Well, very, very little difference. All 
right, let's go through the sweep of the overdrive. The overdrive almost has the same amount of gain uh, in the full sweep as the boost. <laughs> What you'll also notice is when we engage the boost with the overdrive all the way up, there's almost no difference in gain. Uh, I'll leave it on here so you can just hear uh, some of the noise. So you hear an increase in noise when you engage the boost because you're engaging a second drive. When it comes to actually playing, there's almost no difference. <laughs> Alright, let's look at the tone knob on this. I find the tone control in this pedal is built really well. It has a nice sweep all the way through and is usable from its lowest setting all the way to its highest. Let's, let's listen to some individual notes. So it's darker, you still hear quite a bit of the guitar coming through. As we roll the tone up, obviously we get more highs. Now I'm going to turn up where I think the sweet spot on this pedal is, although I find the tone is usable. Um, well, the setup to where, yeah, I find the tone works really well. Now, if we go all the way up, we'll notice an increase in volume as well as quite a bit of boost in the highs. There's almost no low anymore. Um, I mean, there is, but it is really scooped out. Well, now let's take a listen to, uh, I guess, how I use the pedal, how I would suggest this. Using the overdrive set low for like a channel one, and again, your boost uh, for a second channel, kind of like a two channel amp. And I find that this really makes this pedal awesome. Uh, it gives it a wide range of tones, um, as well as giving you the option of basically two great overdrive sounds uh, all in one pedal. That's my review of the Jet City Afterburner. I hope you enjoyed it. I think it's an awesome pedal and I would strongly suggest you go out and pick one up. I want to say a quick thank you to all my new subscribers. When I started this channel a little over a year ago, uh, I was hoping for maybe 20 subscriptions. I cannot believe how many I have now. Uh, I realize to some people it's only a few hundred, uh, but to me that's a pretty big deal. Uh, so thank you very much for supporting this channel. Um, please stick around. There's going to be lots of great reviews coming up. I'm really hoping to start pumping out a video a week, uh, so watch for that. And I also want to say thank you to my subscribers who have uh, sent me a m message. I've had a few lately, uh, just some encouraging words, guys saying they enjoy the videos, and I appreciate that. I would also appreciate any criticisms. Uh, I've been trying really hard to get these videos um, short uh, and to the point, but also quality and content. So you have, if you have any uh, suggestions as to maybe how I could do that better, I will take it with a grain of salt, but I will definitely take it uh, any way you give it to me. 
Yep, we'll let you stew on that one. Anyway, this is Anthony Lum Guitar Mods. Thanks for watching, and as always, keep rocking and keep modding.